This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. I'm continuing some lessons using the Ultimate Sweater Machine. Today on the Ultimate Sweater Machine, I'm going to show how to make a tam. This is a hat with an interesting design created by Short Rowing. And it has a ribbed band all the way around on the back. It is blocked over a dinner plate. And I've made a whole bunch of these. I've got a lot of viewers who really like to make these. But the pattern I had in the past was a fingering weight pattern. So let's do it in worsted weight yarn on the Ultimate Sweater Machine. We're going to cast on 92 needles for the ribbing. I have already put on the cast on comb, the elastic, and several rows of waist yarn as I've showed how to do in previous videos. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a double E-wrap cast on to start the main yarn. This is going to be the color of yarn I'm using for the ribbed band all the way around the hat. I'm making the ribbed band first. So I'll begin by bringing these needles out to hold position. To do the double E-wrap cast on, I'm going to begin by putting a close pin on this yarn and I hang the yarn between the first two needles and then go around the first needle. It's like a long hand E movement. And then I go around the second movement needle and go back to the first needle, pull the needle back and knit it through. Then I go around the third needle, come back over the second needle and knit that through. Around the fourth needle, back to the third and knit that one through. And I'll just keep working across in this way. This is a little different edge on the ribbing. You can do one of the other edges, but I wanted to take advantage of a new video to show a different edge. Now, using key plate 2, I'm going to knit 12 rows. Now that my 12 rows are knitted to make the ribbing, I'm going to unravel and latch up every third needle, starting with the second needle. So I bring it out to hold and then skip two needles and bring one out. Oops, the wrong one. And after you've brought it all the way out to hold, tuck the knitting down and pop it back so that the loop comes off it. And then what you want to do is run these down. You can do it with tugging or you can do it with the latch tool, either one. But you want to run it down till you only have the loop from the cast on. So I'm going all the way down to this very bottom loop. So you put that very bottom loop on the tool and then you just latch up one loop at a time back up to the needle. When I get to the top, I like to push the tool in so that the loop's behind the latch and then just use it as a transfer tool to put the loop back on the machine. And this will have to be done all the way across. This gives you a, a two by one ribbing, that is knit two, purl one. And these latches that I'm doing right now are the purl ones. Once 
once all of the ridges are latched up, then you just want to take the work off on 8 to 10 rows of waste yarn. Now you're going to be handling this a lot, so don't skip on the waste yarn. Use plenty of rows. Once you have the ribbing latched up and you have 8 to 10 rows of waste yarn on it, go ahead and take it off the cast on cuff and off of the waste yarn. You'll be putting this ribbing on the hat using a sew as you go technique. Now you are going to need to cast on 21 stitches for the top of the hat, that is the round part. And we're going to use a row of yarn as a ravel cord. It's a dividing row. So this is several rows of waist yarn. Now there are various strategies for putting a weight on. This is a commercial weight purchased for another machine. Uh, it's a, a holder that's available from the Silver Reed dealers and then I have a ribber weight on it. So there are other ways you could do this and I'll talk about that on the blog. But what we want to do right now is we want to put a dividing row of yarn in. I'm knitting in a row of white yarn and this will act as a ravel cord. I'm going to go ahead and put a clothespin on each end of this yarn just to make it a little easier to manage. And then I will knit a row with the yarn that I'm using for the top of the hat. This is a fun pattern to do with brightly variegated yarns. The hat is short rowed. I have brought the needles away from the carriage except for the last six into hold position. Those needles are not going to knit and I'm going to knit across over to those needles and then each, each row when I'm on the left side I'm going to add another needle into work. It's called a short row increase. I take the yarn and put it under the needle I'm going to add and I move the needle back about halfway and always always with the USM check and make sure that the latch is open on the needle I'm adding. In addition, I'm going to do a sew-as-you-go seam with the brim of the hat and for the very first row only I'm going to put two stitches on this end needle. After that it'll only be one. Now I'm just going to pick up the extra slack on the yarn and approach the knitting and knit to the right. Now I knit to the left again. I add another stitch to the knitting on the left by wrapping the yarn under that needle only and bringing the needle back halfway. Also making sure that the hook is open. Then on the right hand side I pick up the next loop. It is a little easier to knit this end stitch if I bring it out so that it's past the latch and yet about halfway back the stitch needs to be in the forward working position. I'm going to knit to the right. Now I'm going to knit to the left again. These extra procedures are always done on the left. Now as this starts to get longer on this side, I need to move my weight. So what I do is I just kind of tug this comb and pull it down over here. 